So the other type of sampling is non-random sampling. Okay, and there are two types of non-random sampling. They're almost the same thing, though. So this first type we're going to look at is called quota sampling. Now, let me just draw your attention to this bit at the bottom of the page here. The word quota is a fixed share or a number of something. So we're talking about getting, getting a, a quota sampling is going to be something to do with that. So I've said, consider the following scenario. You wish to conduct a survey in the UK on whether being left-handed affects IQ. IQ is like an intelligent quotient. It's how intelligent you are. So we need to choose people to assess. Why would a random sampling be problematic? The reason it would be problematic is because we don't know the sampling frame, i.e. we don't have a list of all the left-handed and non-left-handed people in the UK. You could have a phone directory or you could have like a list of residents, but it's, we don't have anywhere where it says you've ever had to say if you're left-handed or right-handed. So you can't do a random sample because in a random sample you need a list of people to be able to pick them from, whether that's a stratified sample, a simple random sample, or a systematic sample. You always need a sampling frame. So if you don't have a sampling frame, quota sampling is going to be something you're going to want to try and do. So for this scenario, we'd like to use quota sampling, i.e., as with stratified sampling, you divide the population into groups according to the characteristic of interest, and then you determine the size of each group in the sample to reflect the proportions within the population. So in this case, our quotas would be left-handed and right-handed. But instead of doing random sampling in within each group, we actively choose people within each group via suitable means. So you could maybe do advertising or you could ask people until the quota for each group is filled up. So the difference with this one is you still do a stratified sample to begin with, but to be able to get the people, you can't pick them from a list. You have to try and get those people to come to you. You have to do an advert or you have to try and find them somewhere to do it. So I've said, for example, an interviewer could meet people, assess the group that they are in, and then allocate them into the appropriate quota. So they could put them into the group of being left or right-handed. If a person refuses to be interviewed, or if the quota is already full, they just move on to the next person. So this is one where you're kind of having to get the people to fill up the quotas, to fill up the groups. So here is uh, a summary of what quota sampling is. The population is divided into groups according to characteristic. A quota of items or people in each group is set to try and reflect the group's proportion in the whole population. It's carried out by an interviewer selecting the actual sampling units. The advantage is that it, uh, the advantages are that it allows a small sample to still be representative of the population. It's still got that stratified sample um, feature. No sampling frame is required. That's probably the most important one. It's quick, easy, and inexpensive and it allows for easy comparison between different groups in the population because you've already put them into their strata. The disadvantage is, is that there's some non-random sampling can introduce bias because there's there, if you're doing an advert for people who are left-handed, they may be a particular kind of person who responds to an advert, which means that there may be some bias in there. Population must be divided into groups, which can be costly or inaccurate, and increasing the scope of the study increases the number of groups, adding time or expenses non-responses are not recorded. If someone says they don't want to be included in the survey, they are not included, and that, that is just means that they're not, then their answers aren't even going to be considered. So that's what quota sampling is, and here's an example of what quota sampling might look like in an exam question. So it says that a lake contains three species of fish. There are estimated to be 1,400 trout, 600 bass, and 450 pike in the lake. Three different types of fish. A survey of the health of the fish in the lake is carried out and a sample of 30 fish is chosen. Give a reason why stratified rambling, ra random sampling cannot be used. So the reason they can't do stratified random sampling is because we don't have a sampling frame for the fish in the lake. We could never have a list of every fish who lives in a lake. So we can't do the stratified rambling, ra random sampling. We need to state an appropriate sampling method for the survey. Well, it's going to be quota sampling. And then it says, give one advantage and one disadvantage of this sampling method. So the advantages, you could say, is the sample can be obtained quickly, the costs are kept to a minimum, the administration of the survey is easy, meaning doing the survey is easy. The disadvantages, it's not possible to estimate the sampling errors, the process isn't random, and the surveyor may not be able to identify the species of fish easily. But I think the most obvious one there is that the process is not random. Then it just says, explain how this sampling method could be used to select a sample of 30 fish. You must show your working. 
So this thing that we've got here where you're calculating the quota is like the same thing as stratified sampling. You'll be finding how many fish from each group that you need. So they've worked out you would need 17 trout, seven um, bass, and six pikes. So then when you do the rounding then. So it says fish are caught from the lake until the quota of 17 trout, seven bass, and six pike are reached. If a fish is caught and the species quota is full, then this is ignored and the fish is put back into the lake. So it's the same thing as stratified sampling, apart from you just have to kind of get the stuff. And then if you've got space in that quota, you do the survey or you keep the fish. Otherwise, you put it back in. You don't do the survey. The second type is really similar to quota sampling, but it's called opportunity sampling. It says that a variant of quota sampling is called opportunity or sometimes called convenience sampling. This is where we find people at the same time the survey is being carried out. So it's opportunity, because opportunity, you know, if someone is opportunistic, it means they just take advantage of what the opportunity is, or convenience, because it's convenient to do it at the same time as the survey. And this is most similar to things like exit polls at polling stations. In politics, when people leave after they voted, someone in some places will say, who did you vote for? And then they will record their answer. This is an example of an opportunity sample or a convenient sample. This is not a suitable method for the left-handed example because we were trying to say how left-handedness related to IQ. And if you were going to try and do it with that left-handed example, giving the likely time-consuming nature of assessment coupled the, with, with the resources required, we'd likely arrange with the people uh, taking part before the actual assessment tasks took place. Because you wouldn't want to just find someone and be like, oh, you're left-handed. Do you mind spending an hour with me finding out what, uh, what your IQ is? It's not convenient to do it at that time because it's quite a big test. So let's look at these things. Opportunity or convenience sampling. What it is, the sample is taken from people who are available at the time of the study who meet the criteria. How do you carry it out? The interviewer selects the actual sampling units according to the set criteria. Uh, the advantage is, is that it's easy to carry out and inexpensive. And its disadvantage is, is it's unlikely to provide a representative sample. And it's highly dependent on the individual researcher. The most common thing that we think of for convenience sampling or opportunity sampling is if, um, I don't know, people coming out of a supermarket and they would say, oh, do you buy Walker's crisps? And they would do the survey immediately for people who are like, just happen to be there at the supermarket. So that's kind of the difference between those two things that you've got there. Um, the main thing that makes a difference between the random sampling and the non-random sampling is that random sampling, you need to have a sample, sampling frame. You need to have a list of everyone. Non-random -random sampling, you don't need to have a list of everyone, just like the fish in the lake or whether people are left-handed or right-handed. You're just going to find them and then see if you can get them to fill up. So we're going to just try questions from exercise 1C, and that's going to be your homework just to do those. And then when we come back next lesson, we'll be doing some other bits as well, OK?